when I was a younger father, I told my kids, you have a fantastic life, you should be so happy. And the kids turned around and said, you're wrong, Daddy. And I asked them, why am I wrong? Look around. And they said, well, look at the environment, look at the ocean, look at the state the ocean is in, look at all the animals and the plants that get extinct. And they said, we have to clean up what you leave behind. At that moment, I started to actively look around, are there partners and where are the partners to help in the quest to care more for the ocean. I love the ocean, I love being on the ocean, as does my whole family, uh, being shipbuilders in the fifth generation. Obviously, you have a love of the sea. So we have a personal ambition to help keep the oceans alive. We have early on started trying to reduce the necessary power consumption on the yachts. We take care that the resistance of the yachts in the water is kept to a minimum. So we try through technology to reduce the impact of the yachts that we build. Already in the 90s, we built a motor yard called Limitless, which has a combination of a diesel electric and a diesel mechanical propulsion for more efficient use of the power plant. In 2004, we have built a yacht called Rising Sun, which has enormous windows, and we have researched worldwide trying to insulate the inside from the sunshine. And these windows are actually coated with a special film that allows us to reduce the power consumption of the air condition. Yes, it's quite a complex task to have such a difficult project as a yard to be sustainably produced. Lürsen has kept an eye on, on environmental friendly production. So we have clean production facilities, waste is collected and recycled, and for example, rainwater is collected and treated before it's being released in the environment. Energy efficiency today is increased in our production sites by using, for example, um, energy management technologies, LED lighting, or even the installation of windows for more natural lighting. Lösen is implementing lean production in its facilities. For example, the pipe workshop is our first workshop which is fully digital and paperless. This lean philosophy is now being implemented in the shipbuilding facilities, the outfitting department and also the electrical workshop. The goal to reduce the impact has to be and actually is the goal of everyone in our industry because we all know that we have the responsibility to take care of the oceans and the environment. My name is George Duffield. I'm the co-founder of the Blue Marine Foundation. Blue's vision is a healthy ocean for everyone. So we want to protect 30% and manage the other 70% sustainably. The number one problem for the ocean is overfishing, right? If you strip the sea of all life, its ability to absorb CO2, give off oxygen, and weather the shocks of climate change and pollution and acidification is massively diminished. We first met Peter in 2014 when we were a very small NGO, and he immediately understood the importance of a healthy ocean to a healthy yachting industry. So Lurson have been supporting Blue Core Costs for the last five years, and that's enabled us to do a huge amount of projects ranging from uh, the Maldives to Patagonia to the Mediterranean. Ascension Island is, is the most incredible place I've ever visited. It's a little island 10 kilometers across with it, this huge area of ocean around it. And in its waters, it has some of the most exceptional biodiversity in the world. So Ascension's waters were being very heavily fished by a, a long line fleet delivering a huge amount of bycatch and they were paying licenses to the island. But what Lurson enabled us to do was establish an endowment fund which meant that we could essentially replace that license income 
with an income in perpetuity from this fund. The best way to visualise what Lurson have done is um, to look at something called Global Fishing Watch, where you can see the incredible effort of fishing in the Atlantic, and then in the middle of that is this huge oasis around Ascension Island, where there's no fishing and where the wildlife is able to thrive. The Water Revolution Foundation got started by a few shipyards and we are proud to be one of the early partners. Many good ideas cannot have an impact because of lack of funds. So we have pushed for a very substantial membership fee that allows the Water Revolution Foundation to hire scientists and to actually make programs and do research. We are looking into the possibility to have an assessment of each of the yachts. We try to have an objective tool to assess if a yacht has done everything that can sensibly be done to improve the impact. We continuously educate and strive to be in the forefront of new technologies. We spend substantial amounts of money in research. We have cooperations with research institutes. We support universities. And now we are looking into new ways to make better and efficient use of the power plant installed in the ship. We believe in the creativity and the ability of our people. We encourage them to think outside the box. They have in the past come up with fantastic ideas. We are researching fuel cell technology and I'm convinced that by the end of the decade we should be able to have an emission-free yacht sailing on the oceans. If the oceans are polluted, people have no more fun and enjoyment on their yachts and if they don't, we go out of business, which of course is not our intention. So the extraordinarily important thing that Lurson understood very early on is that there is no super yacht industry in a decade if the ocean isn't healthy. Nobody's going to rent or build yachts to sail on a sea that's a toxic bloom full of jellyfish. And I think that's what the super yacht industry needs to do. It needs to step up to its responsibilities to save the planet. If we are to enjoy the oceans as we have been for hundreds and thousands of years, we need to act responsibly.